Codex Conquest is a game that teaches students how to recognize many of the important books of Western civilization by their na nation, genre, and current monetary value. But Codex Conquest is still just a game. It's a fun way to introduce concepts that are more complex in real life. Here to discuss the features of Codex Conquest and how they operate in the real world of rare book buying is Margaret Gamm, curator of rare books and the assistant head of special collections at the University of Iowa. Thanks for speaking with us today, Margaret. Of course. How do rare book curators determine how to collect on behalf of their institution? In the game, there's three types of collections, genre, country, and century, and genre is worth more. But how does it work for you? So I think it really depends on the kind of institution. Uh, here at Iowa, we have many different kinds of collections. Mm. Some of them are based on subject. Some of them are based on chronological area, like our Incunabula collection, which are uh, books printed between, well, before 1501 or 1500, depending on your outlook. Uh, so it can completely depend on the kind of institution where you're working and uh, limitations of your budget, collection development policy, and so on. Um, but a lot of places will collect based on a subject area, and especially a lot of collectors will collect based on a certain person or mm. format, binding, something like that. Um, so there are a lot of different ways that it can work. Uh, some collectors will blend together the time or the country. So maybe a collector will collect books printed in Spain in the 16th century. Mm -hmm. But the kind of collector who collects just books printed in the 16th century is going to have a really tough time because there are a lot of books printed <laughs> in the 16th century and there are a lot of books printed in Spain. So really uniting mm -hmm. a lot of different kinds of collections and focuses is the way to wind up with a really strong collection. How do rare book curators ensure the safety of their holdings? In the game, once a collection is complete, it's safe and it can't be modified. So how does it work in the real world? So in reality, very few collections are ever complete mm -hmm. or ever completely safe. Mm -hmm. uh, many collections, especially in the areas of collecting in the games, like um, if you're collecting based on chronology or on uh, genre or on country, I mean, try to collect all of the books ever printed in Italy. You're going to have a really tough time doing that, and you definitely will never have a complete collection. Uh, if for no other reason than that books can sometimes get lost, as is also established in the game. So you can never have those books. You're not going to have a complete collection. Mm. Um, safety also enters into this because if you, even if you have a complete collection, uh, in the game, in reality, things could still happen to that collection. Mm. So that comes in in the chance cards. Um, occupation, where you give the country to your left all of your books. Uh, theft, disaster, reparation, debt, and uh, loss can happen even within a complete collection in reality. Sadly, I wish it wasn't the case, but it's true. Mm. Thanks for letting us know. How often do rare book curators purchase items? In the game, you can only buy two books per turn, but you can trade with other countries in order to obtain more books. How does it work for you? So in reality, uh, your budget tends to dictate how much you collect and when you collect it, uh, rather than a certain number of books. So an institution might buy two books in a year, but they also might buy 30 books for the same price that they would have bought two. Uh, things like state funding can also affect your budget, or a very generous gift from a donor can suddenly result in many more books being purchased than would have been bought otherwise. Um, trading is much less common in reality than it could be in the game, mostly because the bureaucracy involved would get extremely complex, um, and it does in cases where it does happen. Uh, for private collectors, it's a different situation, and for dealers working within the trade, uh, trade, is, huh, trade is more common. How important is it to consider the condition of a book? In the game, all copies of the book are represented by just one card. So condition is extremely important uh, mm -hmm. when judging especially the value of a book, but also its desirability even as a research object. Um, so condition really dictates whether or not an institution or especially private collectors will purchase that book. Um, so I can show you a few examples of that if you would like, uh, based on some of the cards in the game and uh, some of our holdings. 
So I wanted to show you an example of um, what I was talking about with condition. So this is one of the cards in the game. It's for the Nuremberg Chronicle, which was printed in 1493, so that makes it an incunable. And we have a copy here at the University of Iowa. We actually have two copies at the University of Iowa. And both of them are in completely different conditions. So that is something that would affect the value of each copy in different ways. Um, in the case of this copy, it's been rebound, so it's in a much newer binding, which for a lot of collectors will decrease the value. Um, despite the fact that it looks very nice, this is not an original binding and it's not even contemporaneous, so that's going to lower the value. There are also several examples of repairs to some of the pages, and those are also going to affect the value. So a collector who really likes pristine copies isn't going to want that. Um, there are also some examples of marginalia, which for us is great because we get to see little bits of the provenance or the um, past history of this copy. But for a lot of collectors, that might be a det detractor uh, in the value. Okay, so you saw an example of a card from the game for the Nuremberg Chronicle, and I also want to um, show you an example of the real world equivalent of that, so a bookseller's listing which describes the condition of the book, the book itself, various features, um, the collation formula, uh, major details that any buyer would want to know about that book. So this listing from Ursus Rare Books is uh, describing a book printed in 1744 in Venice. And there's a description of, um, of the book as the first edition of one of the most sought after Venetian 18th century color printed works but there's also a full collation formula and a description of the binding, the size, and other factors that a, a buyer would really want to know before investing in that book. Um, so the bookseller describes the condition as a fresh, fine, and attractive copy in its contemporary Venetian binding. How much do book values fluctuate? In the game, the book's value is set unless a player decides to mark it up or down during a trade. So book values can vary dramatically over time uh, based on the popularity of a text or an author, um, the condition of a book, uh, general scholarly interest in a certain subject area. Um, it, I, I could point to many examples of maps recently put on the market for significantly more, thousands and thousands of dollars more than they were even 20 years ago. Is there anything else that complicates the book market in the real world that isn't depicted in the game? So in the real world, there are many factors that uh, impact the work of a curator and collector. Um, you can see many of them appear in the chance cards, but one that I don't think really comes out quite as much is the provenance or the history of an individual copy of a book, which can have a major effect on whether or not you would want it in your collection. Um, there's also an intermediary, and there is a card for that, the dealer, um, but the dealer can have a major impact on your purchase of the book based on whether or not it's legally acquired. So something that's come up in uh, the news lately are many book thefts. There's actually a list in a network of uh, rare book collectors and dealers who look specifically at that list before buying a book. So many of the books that appear in the card game might have been stolen over time. Uh, that's something that you would really want to watch out for and uh, make sure that you avoid. Thank you so much for talking with me today, Margaret. Of course, happy to. Thank you.